ಸದಾಶಿವಸಂಭಾಂ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರ ಮೇ ಮನಸಿ ಪ್ರತಿ ಮನೋ ಮೇ ವಾಚಿ ಪ್ರತಿ ಆವಿರಾವಿರ್ಮ ಏಧಿ ವೇದ ಮಾಣೀ ಸ್ಥ ಶ್ರುತ ಮೇ ಮಾ ಪ್ರಹಸೀ ಅನೇನಾಧೀತೇನ ಅಹೋರಾತ್ರನ್ ಸಂದಿ ಋತ ವದಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಸತ್ಯ ವದಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ತನ್ಮಾವತು ತದ್ವಕ್ತಾರಮವತು ಅವತು ಮಾಂ ಅವತು ವಕ್ತಾರಮವತು ವಕ್ತಾರ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 yesterday we completed the first chapter where the topic of creation was presented and under that topic it was said that the entire world idam is nothing but atma otherwise called brahma so brahman is jagat karanam jagat the world is karyam the effect and being the effect it is mithya and brahma being the cause it is satyam so this world is mithya brahman alone is satyam and this fact is revealed by another sentence in shastra sarvam khalvidam brahma everything is brahma and technically we call it badha samanaadi karanyam sarvam brahma these two words have got apposition and this apposition means they are in the same case and by this apposition the fact revealed is sarvam brahma means sarvam vastutah nasti brahma eva asti sarvam brahma means really what is appearing as sarva all pluralistic world is not really there substantially what is there is brahma alone and thus there is only one reality called brahma advaitam brahma is revealed by the srushti prakriya all the details of creation were presented but those details do not have so much significance as the tatparyam the main message has therefore in the beginning of the next chapter bashyakara says this whole topic of creation and the details given are arthavadah it is a glorification of the topic it is just a means to communicate the message therefore don't get stuck with the details that how is it possible how the lokas were created even before the sukshma mahabhutas were created how the whole thing went into the ocean and all this and how when parmatma is already present it can enter into the his body etc bhavan bashyakara says you need not bother about those details because the message is all that is here all that is experienced by you is nothing but brahma and having clarified that message bhagwan bashyakara introduces the next chapter saying that one who knows this fact that all that is here is brahma 
and that Brahman I am, which was revealed by the Pravesh Shruti. So, in the first chapter, two topics were there. One is the topic of creation, other is entry of Paramatma into this body. An entry of Paramatma into this body has got the message of Paramatma, the creator, the Adhisthanam of this world alone is available as Jivaha. So, these two messages were given in the first chapter. This whole world is nothing but Paramatma and that Paramatma is available as Jiva, I am. Very difficult to accept for most of the people. That same Paramatma who has created this world is available as I, miserable I. Swamiji, this morning itself, so many people, they, they, they what is called insulted me. So much backache is there, so much uh, this social problems are there, financial problems are there. This I who is fraught with so many problems, how can I be Brahman? Shruti says, it will become more clear in the third chapter. Now, we have little difficulty. We understand your difficulty. We will try to help you solving that problem. Then in the second chapter, the introduction is that if a person understands this message well, then he is free from samsara. But if he does not understand, then person goes through the cycle of birth and death. And this cycle of birth and death, which is otherwise called samsara, is described by the Shruti and Bhashakara says, for what purpose? For vairagyam. We require a lot of vairagyam and therefore, Bhashakara says, Shruti hi vairagya heto ho aha. So that we will have this particular dispa dispassion that how long this body I have to assume next body, next body, next body. If a person is feeling that Swamiji, I do not have any problem, I am happy, then right now you may not find the relevance of Vedanta. If you are missing something in life, if you are feeling that what you have is not good enough for making you fulfilled, then only this pursuit starts. That is why the Vedanta Shravanam is called Vairagya Katha, Vitaraga Katha. If a person thinks, Swamiji, I have some problem, but I am managing with the problems and I do not have as such, I do not want to be free from this birth and death, I am okay with this. Then perhaps Vedanta will not appeal to you. Or if you are finding that, Swamiji, whatever problem I have, I am capable of solving it well. And finally, I will reach the destination of no problem at all one day. I do not think uh, anybody has to guide me for that. Then Vedanta is not relevant. Vedanta is meant for those who have tried all these empirical solutions and has discovered that all empirical solutions cannot give me permanent solution. For them alone, this Vedanta will be found appealing, found effective. They will feel like committing themselves to Vedanta. Otherwise, you can study Vedanta, but real impact comes when Vairagya for this limited achievements, limited bhoga comes. In this particular fact we need to assimilate. It is not that you have to run away from the world, you become sannyasi, not necessary. But one needs to see the limitations of worldly pursuit. One needs to see that all worldly pursuit cannot give me what really I am seeking in my life. That has to happen, then only real Vedanta starts. And therefore, Vairagya Heto Ho, for the purpose of Vairagya, Shruti is presenting this Janma of this Jiva. Paramatma who is appearing as Jiva undergoes this cycle of birth and death. That is very, very nicely in a poetic manner. 
with so much imagination etc it is presented and here jiva is said to have three janmas what are the three janmas the first janma is jiva goes to the male body along with the food based on the pancha panchagni vidya this description is given and jiva along with food enters into the male body and from the male body it goes out to the female body that is called prathamo jan prathamam janma purusho hava ayam aditah garbha bhavati yad etad retah tad etad sarvebhya angebhya tejah sambhutam atmani eva atmanam bibarti tad yada striyam sinchati ata enam janayati tadasya prathamam janma so many details are given but main thing is that conception is called prathama janma when this seed from the male body goes to the female body that conception happens that conceiving the baby that is called prathama janma in fact in some astrology that alone is considered to be birth date very difficult to find out but that is conception that is prathama janma of jiva and then shruti incident details given that this male seed gone to the female body remains in the female body mother's body and it does not harm the mother body it becomes one part of the mother's body as it were tad striyam atma bhuyam gachati yatha swamangam tatha tasma denam na hinasti otherwise generally any foreign body comes if this our body will reject it even a small particle goes to your eyes will be rejected but this fetus is not rejected and fetus does not harm the body it becomes one part of the body as it were and that lady also is taking care of that fetus and sa bhavaitri bhavaitavya shruti incidentally gives the suggestion to all husbands and family members of that lady who is on her family way sa bhavaitri that lady who is taking care of the baby inside the womb should be taken care of she is taking care of the baby inside therefore she herself should be bhavaitavya should be taken care of rakshaitavya stri bhartra it is bhashyakara even though it is a sanyasi but it specifically says bhartra rakshaitavya it is the duty therefore the simanta function is there no but simanta means a particular function samskara where husband is supposed to comb the hair of his wife during that pregnancy it is a symbolic of husband taking care of his wife when especially generally also he is supposed to take care but especially during that period the he has to give extra care that is suggested and bashyakara says that that has to be done by the husband and here bashyakara very beautiful note he makes nahi upakara pratyupakara mantarena loke kasyachit kenachit sambandha upapadyate he says the whole life there is give and take upakara pratyupakara when you want to sustain the relationships with someone you cannot expect other person to keep on giving it will not sustain for long time always you make sure that whoever is serving us is benefited sufficiently that's why in management they always say that you make sure that employees are taken care of very well they are taken care of so well that they don't feel like going out 
So Bhashikara says, without that, Pratyupakara, Upakara, there will not be any sustainable relationship. So relationship of exploitation cannot work for long time. If it is only one side, one sided, it will not work. And therefore, one has to have this approach of give and take. And then, this lady, he takes care of the, the baby inside. And then, when this baby is born, then father does all the samskaras. And baby coming out of the female's mother's body, that is called Dvitiyam Janma. The second birth is the baby coming out of mother's body. And then, third Janma is a very peculiar way of presenting. What is the third Janma? This baby has come out. Two Janmas are over. First Janma was conception. Second Janma is the birth. Generally, we are familiar with baby coming out of the mother's womb. And the third one is, this baby comes out, becomes father or mother, and then gives the responsibility of doing all Shastriya karma. In olden days, this was very much highlighted. Generally, people will think that I have got this much property from my father, this much cash, this much uh, land, this much uh, investment in uh, share market, etc. But in Shastra, one point was highlighted is that father has to give the responsibility of all dharma karma to his son. Samprati, samprati karma. Means, whatever puja he has, he has to hand over. He has to make sure that his son has learned puja. Whatever yagna he was doing, he has taught his son to do it. And whatever Vedic chanting he was doing, that he should teach to his son, so that son will continue. Because in those days, Vedas were preserved by specific families. One family will be taking care of one shakha, another family, another shakha, another shakha. And therefore, it was the duty of the parents to hand over the duties to their children. And having done that, now this father, the son who has become now father, and his body has become old, and then he leaves this body and again takes another body. The taking another body is called third Janma. So, Bhashyakar also raises the question, but let us understand what is said by Shruti. So, the baby is born, that is second Janma. The, the baby becomes, the, this, he grows up, becomes adult, gets married, has child, and hands over his duty and takes another body, that another body will be called third Janma. Why it is told in this manner? One reason is that father and son are considered to be one. So, there is a continuity of this father-son DNA continuity is there. And therefore, next Janma is considered to be the Janma of this Jiva alone. And Shruti wants to present this idea that Jiva continues to remain in the cycle of birth and death and therefore, the third Janma is presented in this manner. Simple way of seeing these three Janmas is, first one is entering into the male body, second is entering into the female body and third is coming out of mother's womb. These are the three Janmas. This is a simple way of seeing, but Shruti wants to convey something more and therefore, Janma is presented in this manner. All right. Now, having talked about this cycle of Punarapi Jananam, Punarapi Maranam, Punarapi Janani, Jathare, Shayanam, in Bhajagovindam it is said, how long will it continue? It will continue till one gets this self-knowledge. For that, one has to go to the Guru, listens to the scriptures with proper attitude and necessary qualifications, and by this 
teaching of the Shastra coming from Guru, one will attain the vision, I am not this body mind sense complex, I am Sakshi which is Jagadadishthanam Brahma. And generally this is the method followed by the students, goes to the Guru, gets knowledge, be free. But there are some exceptional cases. What are the exceptional cases? Somebody has studied Shastra in this Janma, got some knowledge, but because of some obstacle, could not get the Jnana Nishtha, the abidance in this wisdom and therefore, he or she has to take another birth. Some obstacle was there. And when then obstacle is removed, then in the next Janma, at very early age, at the age of 5, 7, whatever, this knowledge is resurfaced in the mind of the person and he abides in this knowledge and becomes free in that Janma. We use the expression Yoga Brashta in the sixth chapter. Some people have done lot of sadhana and in, in the past chanma, therefore in this chanma at very early age, this knowledge comes. Sometimes with the help of the teacher, sometimes even without the help of teacher, because already has done. Like sometimes you have cooked something yesterday, sweet you have already made, so you do not have to cook today. So, you have to just take out from this uh, refrigerator and you give. So, similarly here, this knowledge is already there, because of some reason it did not fructify completely and therefore, in this Janma, knowledge comes without Guru, but they are all exceptional cases. Many people ask this question, Swamiji Ramana Maharshi did not go to this any ashram to do Vedanta course, then why should we study Vedanta? Without that also knowledge can come. Our answer is simple. If you are like Raman Maharshi, you need not. Do you think you are? He stayed in the cave for so many years. You are not able to stay in your room also alone. Where is the question of cave? So, if you have the background which Raman Maharshi had, you need not study. Raman Maharshi did not go and ask anyone that should I study Vedanta or not. He did not ask. So, they are, they are called spiritual prodigy. For them it is not required, but most of them it is required. And now, Shruti is presenting that ex exceptional case, that one Rishi called Vamadeva, in the womb itself, that knowledge was resurfaced, the knowledge which he had gained in the past Janma was resurfaced, Garbhenu San Eva Esh, San Anu, Esham Avedam Aham Devanam Janimani Vishwa. So, Vamadeva understood this fact that I am the Adishthanam of all the Devatas, all the human beings in the womb itself. And he appreciated this that because of the Agdhanam and Agdhana based wrong conclusion, I was bound by samsara as it were. And he compares this bondage of the agnanam and adhyasa, the wrong conclusion, with the shackle. He said, I was shackled with so many chains, hundreds of chains of this body with which I was identifying. But now, like a shena, like a hawk, I have come out of all this bondage and I see myself to be ever free Brahma. And in this manner, he got this knowledge and because of this knowledge, he became free in that Janma in the very Garbhavastha. And he became free, that idea is given in the next mantra, sa evam vidvan asmat sharirat bhedat sharira bhedat urdvam utkramya amushpin svarge loke sarvan kama naptva Amrutaha Samabhavat. So, idea is that this Vamadeva, he came out of this mother's womb 
एंड लिव द लाइफ ऑफ ए जीवन मुक्ति सर्वान कामान आपवा मीन्स ही हैड दिस सेंस ऑफ फुलफिलमेंट दिस सेंस ऑफ फुलफिलमेंट इज प्रेजेंटेड इन शास्त्रा बाय दिस एक्सप्रेशन वॉट सर्वान कामान समझते मीन्स वेन यू एंजॉय ऑल द ऑब्जेक्ट साइमल्टेनियसली हाउ मच हैप्पीनेस यू हैव दैट मच हैप्पीनेस दिस वाइस पर्सन हैज बिकॉज ऑफ नोइंग आनंद स्वरूप ब्रह्म एज वन सर आई एम आनंद स्वरूप ब्रह्म बिकॉज ऑफ दिस नॉलेज ही हैज गॉट दिस आनंदा दिस फुलफिलमेंट इन विच द हैप्पीनेस ऑफ all the objective experiential pleasure is included so you may be you if you enjoy music you have some ananda if you eat something which you like you have some ananda you get some good news you have got some ananda all of them are manifestation of that brahmananda alone and in knowing oneself to be this ananda swarupa brahma one attains this sense of fulfillment in bhagavad gita prajahati yada kaman sarvan partha manogatan atmanyeva atmana tushtah sthita pragnas tadochyate one sign of wisdom is they do not miss anything nothing will threaten them oh if this thing goes away what that doesn't happen something happens or doesn't happen does not create any sense of elation or depression because he appreciates himself to be ananda swarupa so jivan mukti and sharira bhedat after this dropping of the body after leaving this body amrutah sabhavat he became amruta here became is in a figurative sense he owned up himself to be amruta this is called videha mukti so gnanam gives jivan mukti that was indicated by sarvan kaman aptva gnanam leads the person to videha mukti that is amrutah samabhavat what is videha mukti videha mukti means continuation of freedom even when the body has fallen and there is no rebirth that is called videha mukti v means free from deha means body the freedom characterized by the absence of the body is called videha mukti i am free when i am alive and even when the body falls off i continue to be free that freedom after the fall of the body also which continues that is called videha mukti so with this the second chapter where samsara was presented in the form of the cycle of birth and death and knowledge as the solution to be free from the cycle of death birth and death as it happened in the case of baba deva that was described now the third chapter where inquiry into the nature of brahma is presented and it starts with the discussion of the seekers of knowledge ko ayam atma iti vayam upasmahe katarassa atma so some jignasu some mumukshu they must have heard the story of vamadeva that there was one vamadeva who got the knowledge and because of that he became free so we would like to know what is that self which he understood and what is that self which we are also referring to as i upasmaye vyavaharamah what is that atma which we are referring to as i and shruti presents these two options one is karana bhutah atma eyes ears etc because of which we are seeing hearing etc is this atma 
because of which seeing is happening, hearing is happening, touching is happening, holding is happening, speaking is happening. Are this karana, this indriyas, organs of action and organs of perception, are they atma? Bahya karana, the organs of perception and action, are they atma? So, that was the first point of inquiry. Technically, we call it Tvam Padartha Vichara. They started inquiry, of course, with the help of the teacher into the nature of Atma. Yena Vapashyati, Yena Vashrunoti, Yena Gandhana Jigrati. Is that Karana Rupa, this Karana Sanghata, Indriya Sanghata, is it Atma? So, they inquired and they must have come to the conclusion that Karana, this Indriyas themselves cannot be Atma, because Indriyas themselves being the instrument, they are meant for the knowing principle. Instrument cannot be the ultimate entity, because they are meant for the knower. Therefore, they discarded the idea of all the Indriyas karmendriyas and dhanendriya being atma. That is a good exercise. So, Tvampadartha vichara is given in, in a very skeleton manner. In Taitriya Upanishad, it is given in the form of Panchakosha Viveka. In Chandogya, 8th chapter, it is given Avasthatraya Viveka. In Mandukya, it is given Avasthatraya Viveka. But here it is presented in the form of this Karana and Karana Upalabdha, the knower which is using the Karana that Viveka is done. And so, first they discarded the idea of Indriya, Karmendriya and Dhanendriya being Atma. Then they thought this external organs may not be Atma. But what about this internal organs called antakkarana? Yad etad hridayam manascha etad. Hridayam here refers to buddhi, manaha refers to the mind, and both of them are representative of antakkarana, which has got four aspects. Manaha is called sankalpa vikalpatmaka manaha. Mind is the aspect of the antakkarana, where the thoughts of pros and cons are going on, whether I should go or not. If I go, this is the benefit. If I do not go, this is the benefit. So, this type of thinking, when it is prevailing in the mind, most of the people are like this, to be or not to be, you know. So, that thought is there, I should go or not, should not go or not. Even for the class, some of you might have this, whether to go or not, anyway, it is a last class. If Swamiji will just give some summary, hey, he will listen, uh, there are so many recordings available, hey, why? So, not go, no, no, but it is the last class, hey, one class, anyway Swamiji is going, so we do not know, so let us finish, hey, we already we have attend, attended three classes, so let us make it complete, go. So, this is how the mind, our <laughs> antakkarana keeps on thinking, many people are thinking whether to get married or not to get married. Remain thinking, thinking, manaha avastha is there, buddhi avastha does not come. So, <laughs> buddhi means nishaya. Decision as a state does not come. And for he started thinking at the age of 25 and he became 50. So, manaha only remains. So, what? They remains bachelor. Second is buddhi. Buddhi means nishaya. This particular situation is of this nature. This is good for me, this is not good for me. All these are called buddhi. Third faculty is called chittam, memory. You have read something, you recollect now. Aha, Swamiji is Mandukya Upanishad, I have read, I have studied. Some name I remember, some uh, very small Upanishad, that much I remember, all these details. So, what? It is the smallest Upanishad of all ten Upanishads. And it is considered to be a very powerful Upanishad. 
हाँ दैट आई रिमेंबर दैट इज कॉल्ड स्मृति ही और यू सी द पर्सन हाँ आई हैव सीन यू लास्ट टाइम दिस इज कॉल्ड चित्तम अहंकारा मीन्स दिस सेंस ऑफ आइडेंटिटी आई एम मिस्टर सो एंड सो आई एम मिसिस सो एंड सो एंड आई एम द ओनर ऑफ दिस आई एम द फादर ऑफ दिस चिल्ड्रन दिस मेनी चिल्ड्रन मदर ऑफ दिस मेनी चिल्ड्रन ऑल दिस इज कॉल अहंकारा I am doing this. I am not doing this. Swami ji, I wanted to complete my post graduation, PhD. I could not do this. I did, did not do, etc. That I is called ahankara. And now this antakarana has got many thoughts, and all the thoughts are associated with. consciousness chaitanyam and because of these thoughts variety of thoughts consciousness gets different different names like one water because of different names and forms gets different names tarangaha wave avarta wavelet so so many avarta whirlpool form all these are the names of water similarly one consciousness associated with different different thoughts get the designation of different different experiences so every experience is nothing but consciousness with a thought so equation is what experience is equal to consciousness plus thought now you are hearing atma is jagat karanam so then in your mind a particular experience of hearing take place and what is that experience content consciousness with a particular thought regarding the content of the sentence if you are eating something there is a eating ex- experience of that particular item if you are listening to music then there is experience of that particular sound every experience is nothing but the consciousness with different different names and forms and shruti gives some list to give us the idea that one and the same consciousness is appearing in the form of different different experiences different different the cognitions and very beautiful description is given sangnanam sangnanam means the sentiency what we call life so life is nothing but consciousness with the upadi antakarana upadi sukshma sharira upadi that is called sangnanam sentiency life agnanam agnanam means what we generally call esp you know extra sensory perception some people have some intuition ah tomorrow this will happen the next election this person will become prime minister i don't want to tell who will become prime minister because i don't have intuition but some people have that intuitive knowledge or as commentator says here when you do some yoga sadhana dharana dhyana samadhi called sanyama then you get some extra knowledge you can say what is there behind this wall even there is a wall in between you can tell you can tell there are so many stars in this galaxy so this type of extraordinary knowledge is called here agnanam then vignanam different types of secular knowledge is called vignanam and Medha, see pragnanam. Pragnanam means pragnapti. The knowledge of tatkalika pratiba. Pragnanam means the presence of mind. Some people, when some situation happens, they cannot figure out what is to be done. Whereas this presence of mind is called pragnanam. Medha, medha means the retentiveness. this capacity of 
remembering things. Most of the people nowadays, they have got, Swamiji, I am not able to remember. That ability to remember, the faculty of remembrance is called Medha, Drishtihi, Indriya Dwara Sarva Vishyopalabdihi. The cognition of different objects through the sense organs, Dhrutihi, perseverance, that also is missing nowadays. People cannot sustain things. They start, but they cannot continue. When a small obstacle comes, they drop it. Drutihi means the capacity or the quality of the mind because of which a person continues to hold on to the pursuit he or she has taken up. Even when there is a difficulty, even when the body is little tired, still you inspire yourself to continue. That ability is called dhritihi. Matihi, mananam, the ability of reflection. Manisha, manisha means this independent thinking. Some people do not have that independent thinking. They cannot think independently. Always they have to ask some people. Whereas Manisha means Swatantriyam, Jutihi, Dukhit Bhavaha, sadness. This sadness is also nothing but consciousness with a particular frame of mind. This is a very beautiful thing to deliberate, contemplate upon. Even when there is sadness in the mind, it is nothing but the consciousness with a particular mode of mind. Content of the sadness is Ananda Swarupa Atma. That is a very nice thing to, to appreciate. What? The content of sadness, the truth of the sadness is the Chaitanyam, which is Ananda Swarupa Atma. Kratuhu Adhyavasayaha, this decision. Then Sankalpaha, ascertainment that this is white, this is black, etc. Kratuhu, decision, I will do this. Asuhu, the mode of the mind which is responsible for the continuation of this life. Our breathing continues because certain act, mental activity is supporting it. And that mental activity is called asuhu. Kamaha, desire for the objects which are not there. Vashaha, the passion for relationship. All these are, Shruti says, all these are the namadheyani pragnanasya. All of them are nothing but the names based on the upadi of antakkarana vritti. So, whenever you have got any feeling, any state of the mind, you can appreciate this. What? This feeling, this experience is nothing but consciousness with one particular form of mind, one particular vritti. Anger happened. This anger is consciousness with a particular frame of mind. Based on the condition of the mind, you do not judge yourself. Puja Swamiji used to emphasize this point. Generally, this Vedanta pursuit, people study Shastra for some years and afterward they get this complex. Swamiji, I am studying Vedanta, but still these bad thoughts come. They use the word bad thoughts. Really speaking, you should never brand any thought to be a bad thought. Don't call, in fact, Puja Swamiji did not like to use the word bad. He said, you don't brand it. You just say, it is a thought. Just is a thought. Another type of thought. Like, mango is a fruit. Jackfruit is a fruit or not? Fruit. You may not like it. Some people don't like jackfruit. But it is a fruit. Can you say jackfruit is a bad fruit? Just because you don't like, do you call it a bad fruit? You should not say. It is a fruit. See, orange is a fruit. So, you do not judge yourself based on the condition of the mind. You do not brand the thought to be a bad thought. You say, it is a thought 
different from generally I entertain. So all of them are thought. And what is the content of every experience? Every experience is nothing but consciousness with different, different names and forms. So sadhaka, the jignasu, the one who is pursuing Vedanta, in every experience, he tries to focus on consciousness. That what is this experience? Now there is experience of sadness. What is this? It is nothing but consciousness with a thought. This jealousy, it is what? Consciousness with jealousy thought. So, pragnanasya namadheyani bhavanti. So, by this two mantras, tvam padartha vichara, the analysis of what I am, that was done. And the conclusion is that the content of this individual who is karta and also pramata, the content of karta and pramata, which is called jiva, is pragnanam consciousness. One consciousness alone is appearing as a karta, appear, karta means the doer, and appearing as pramata knower. So, the content of this jiva is consciousness. What about the content of this world? Because I am Sakshi, the witness of the world, including this body mind sense complex. But what is the truth about the world? Shruti wants to say this external world also is nothing but consciousness. He said, Esha Brahma, Esha Indraha, Esha Prajapatihi, Ete Sarve Devaha, Imani Chapanja Mahabhutani, Prithivi Vayu Akashaha, Pahad Jyotimshi, Iti Etani Imani, Cha Shudra Mishrani Eva Bijani, Itarani Cha Itarani Cha, Andajani Cha, Jayu Jarujani, Swedajani Cha, Udbijani. So Shruti says, one consciousness alone is appearing as all the devatas. Consciousness alone is in the form of Brahma. Here Brahma doesn't mean Satyam Dhanam Anantam Brahma. Brahma, Mr. Saraswati, Hiranyagarbha. And Indraha, the, the lord of all the devatas. Prajapati hi, Virat, one who is having this entire gross universe as the body. And all the devatas, all of them are nothing but one and the same consciousness. All panchamaha bhutas and all the bodies, and Shruti divides the bodies into four. They call andajani, born of eggs, like birds, etc. Then jarujani, like human beings, born of wombs. Swedajani, born of the moisture. Udbhijjani, born of the earth like plants. And Swedajani means small, small insects. So, all of them are nothing but one and the same consciousness. So, what should is say? That your inner world of experiences is nothing but consciousness and even the external world of objects, that also is consciousness. The world, inner world of experiences is consciousness, external world of objects is also consciousness. And somebody may say, how is it possible that one what is content of inner world also is the content of the external world? Then our Shastra says that it is not something new. In your dream world also this happens. In dream world, External objects are nothing but you, the waker consciousness. And the experiencer and its all organs, all his thoughts, they are also nothing but the waker consciousness. One waker consciousness alone is appearing as the external world and inner world of thoughts, inner world of all different experiences. And as it happens in the dream, same is the case with this waking state also. This external world 
is also nothing but expression of the same consciousness which is existence and same ex consciousness is available as the world of experiences. Swamiji, I do not feel so. I can appreciate Swamiji, I am there as the content of all experiences, all these ang thoughts of anger or thoughts of frustration, sadness, all of them are myself, that I can understand. But all of them people who are sitting in front of me, that is also consciousness. Swamiji, a chair also is consciousness. It does not look like. Why it does not look like? Because you are not coming out of your identification with the body. In the dream world, if you were told like this, in the dream world, you are listening to the class. You are a listener. And in the dream world, if you were told that the Swamiji who is sitting in front of you, also you, and the chair on which you are sitting, that also is you, then Mike also is you, you will not accept. There also you will say, what Swamiji? So, as you are saying now, in the same manner you will say that. Why? Because in the dream world, you are identifying with one particular body. And therefore, your sense of identity is limited to that body. And therefore, you will not accept this. But when you wake up, then you will accept, yeah, in the dream, I alone was Swamiji, I alone was the chair, I alone was the listener. Now, just as when you wake up, you are able to discover this fact, Shruti says, you require the second awakening. That is why it is called enlightenment. You have required second awakening, where you discover, I am the consciousness, the truth behind this individual experiences and all external objects. And that was presented here. And then, Shruti said, this consciousness is giving the existence to the entire world, external and internal, by saying Pragna Netra Sarvam. Everything is Pragna Netra. Pragna Netra means Niyate Anena Iti Netram. That because of which everything is led to have the existence is called netram. So, pragna chatat netram, pragna chatat netram, pragna netram yasya. Entire world, external and internal, is having pragna, consciousness, as netram. Netram means what? Satta pradayaka. The entire world, consisting of external and internal objects, is having consciousness as the basis for their existence. Pragna netram. Everything has got its existence because of this consciousness alone. And then that idea is further explained by saying that everything is born because of consciousness, sustained by consciousness and resolved back into consciousness. Therefore, it says pragnane pratishthitam. Everything is in the Srishti Kala. Srishti Kale Sarvam Pragnane Pratishthitam. Everything is having their being in consciousness when it is born. Like all pots have their being when they are born. In what? Clay only. When all pots are born, that time their being is in clay. Similarly, all objects internal and external have their being when they are born in consciousness. Then pragna netraha lokaha and they have got consciousness alone as their sustaining factor. Here netra as sustaining factor and pragna pratishthita and they are resolved, negated only in consciousness. Like all waves are born of water sustained by water and merge back into water. Therefore, all the waves are nothing but water. Thus, consciousness is the basis for this jiva and consciousness is the basis for this external world. Tasmat pragnanam brahma. Therefore, this pragnanam 
which is the truth of the individual is brahma which is the truth of ishvaraha so pragnanam here refers to the tvam pada lakshartha sakshi chaitanyam witness consciousness which is the truth of the individual is brahma which is the truth of the entire world and thus pragnanam brahma means consciousness which is the truth of i the individual is the brahma jagad adhisthanam the basis of the entire world and thus by shruti the ultimate message that i real i consciousness am brahma jagad adhisthanam what is the benefit of this shruti talked about the benefit by saying sa etena pragnena atmana asman lokat utkramya amushbin swarge loke sarvan kaman aptva amrutah sabhavat samabhavat so when a person remains in this understanding pragnena atmana pragnena atmana tishthati when one remains in this understanding that i am consciousness which is the truth of this world then asma, then sarvan kaman aptva having enjoying the jivat mukti and asman lokat utkramya having departed from this body and swarge loke here swarga loka <laughs> swarga refers to ananda swarupa brahma which is loka which is chaitanya swarupa so here swarga does not have the meaning of heaven swarga is in the sense of swarupa ananda swarupa and loka has got the meaning of chaitanya swarupa so swarge loke means chaitanya ananda swarupe brahmani samabhavat so he remains in that and becomes amrutaha becomes immortal in other words what we have seen earlier he attains jivan mukti he attains videha mukti so with this the panchama khanda or the second chapter the third chapter is completed so the essential message of this upanishad is discover yourself to be consciousness see this truth that consciousness is the truth of this world and therefore i am the truth of the entire universe i am brahma this is the final conclusion of this upanishad which is the conclusion of every upanishad it is not that uh, here we aitari upanishad something special message is that every upanishad has to tell the same truth only the way of telling is different now some people may say somebody all this so many things you told somebody finally what we have to do these four classes you hear generally at the end i will tell this take home message first of all i will say you don't have to do anything to be free you don't have to do anything because you are already free this is the first message if you can digest this you don't have to go to the next one but swami ji i don't feel i am free okay i want to do something tell me swami ji what should i do first of all <laughs> you go to the shanti patha of the upanishad vak me manasi pratishthita mano me vachi pratishthitam have this integrated life the life of integrity what you speak what you think what you do let there be maximum harmony let there be truthfulness in our life for small small things at least you don't tell lies raise your price of telling lies now you are telling lies for 500 rupees you raise the price make it 5000 so at least raise immediately to give up this lie this telling lies is very difficult for most of the people at least for small small things 
where you can manage, you can afford to lose something, avoid telling lies. So, first of all, life of values, first thing. Second thing is, offering prayers to Ishvara, O oh Lord, let my life be the life of values and all other necessary sadhanas. Give me the strength, physical strength, emotional strength, intellectual strength for doing my sadhana. Prayers. Life of values, prayers. Third is regular study of Shastra. At least half an hour you study in whichever way you can. You listen to someone, read someone, preferably listen to some teacher. And in the context of the Vedantic vision, one sadhana you can follow is, every day five to ten minutes you spend. For five minutes if possible, if you don't have more time, for just see, you sit comfortably and say, I am different from this body. I am not limited to this body. I am the witness of this body. I am the witness of the sense organs. I am the witness of the mind. And whenever during the day it is possible, try to appreciate, I am not confined to this body. I am not identical with this body. I am the witness of this body. This Sakshi Bhava, this appreciating oneself to be Sakshi. Remember, you don't become Sakshi. It is not I am asking you to become Sakshi. You appreciate the fact that you are Sakshi. Sakshitvam is, is, a, is a fact about yourself. You appreciate, I am Sakshi. And slowly you will develop the objectivity about this body. And therefore, you will not have fear of death. You will have less fear of disease. You will have less complexes regarding the condition of the body. Otherwise, after studying Vedanta for so many years, people saying that male, female, this so much fight is there. Why can you use this all the time? He, he, he. Why didn't you use the word she? Yeah, I should have used as a teacher, but he did not use. Why should it disturb me? You are neither male nor female. Appreciate this fact. So, every day, five to ten minutes you spend and seeing this fact, I am Sakshi of this body, I am not the body. If this you do, you will see some progress in your pursuit. I wish you all the best in your pursuit of knowledge, which is the pursuit of freedom. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Harihi Om